Saint Teresa of Avila, also called Saint Teresa of Jesus, baptized as Teresa Sanchez de Cepeda y Ahumada, the 28th of March 1515 to the 4th of October 1582, was a prominent Spanish mystic, Roman Catholic saint, Carmelite nun, author, and theologian of contemplative life through mental prayer. Active during the Counter Reformation, she was a reformer in the Carmelite order of her time. The movement she initiated, later joined by Saint John of the Cross, eventually led to the establishment of the Discalced Carmelites, though neither she nor John were alive when the two orders separated. In 1622, 40 years after her death, she was canonized by Pope Gregory XV, and, on 27 September 1970, she was named a Doctor of the Church by Pope Paul VI. Her books, which include her autobiography The Life of Teresa of Jesus and her seminal work The Interior Castle, are an integral part of Spanish Renaissance literature as well as Christian mysticism and Christian meditation practices. She also wrote Way of Perfection. After her death, Saint Teresa was considered a candidate to become a national patron saint in Spain. A Santero image of the Immaculate Conception of El Viejo, said to have been sent with one of her brothers to Peru, was canonically crowned by Pope John Paul II on 28 December 1989 at the Shrine of El Viejo. Pious Catholic beliefs also associate Saint Teresa with the infant Jesus of Prague with claims of former ownership and devotion. <laughs> Early life Teresa of Avila was born in 1515 in Avila, Spain. Her paternal grandfather, Juan Sánchez de Toledo, was a Murano, a Jewish man who was forcibly converted to Christianity. When Teresa's father was a child, Juan was condemned by the Spanish Inquisition for allegedly returning to the Jewish faith, but he was able to reassume a Christian identity. Her father, Alonso Sánchez de Cepeda, was a successful wool merchant and one of the wealthiest men in Avila. Her father bought a knighthood and successfully assimilated into Christian society. Previously married to Catalina del Peso y Hainau with whom he had three children, in 1509, Sánchez de Cepeda married Teresa's mother, Beatriz de Ahumada y Cuevas, in Gotarandora. Teresa's mother was especially keen to raise her daughter as a pious Christian. Teresa was fascinated by accounts of the lives of the saints and ran away from home at age seven with her brother Rodrigo to find martyrdom among the Moors. Her uncle stopped them as he was returning to the town, having spotted the two outside the town walls. When Teresa was eleven years old, her mother died, leaving her grief stricken. This prompted her to embrace a deeper devotion to the Virgin Mary as her spiritual mother. Teresa was also enamored of popular fiction, which, at the time was primarily medieval tales of knighthood and works about caring for one's appearance. Teresa was sent for her education to the Augustinian nuns at Avila. In the monastery, she suffered greatly from illness. Early in her sickness, she experienced periods of religious ecstasy through the use of the devotional book Third Spiritual Alphabet published in 1527 and written by Francisco de Osuna. This work, following the example of similar writings of medieval mystics, consisted of directions for examinations of conscience and for spiritual self-concentration and inner contemplation known in mystical nomenclature as oratio recollectionis or oratio mentalis. She also employed other mystical ascetic works such as the Tractatus de Oration et Meditation of Saint Peter of Alcantara, and perhaps many of those upon which Saint Ignatius of Loyola based his spiritual exercises, possibly the spiritual exercises themselves. She claimed that, during her illness, she rose from the lowest stage, recollection, to the devotions of silence, or even to the devotions of ecstasy, which was one of perfect union with God see section mysticism. During this final stage, she said she frequently experienced a rich blessing of tears. As the Catholic distinction between mortal and venial sin became clear to her, she says she came to understand the awful terror of sin and the inherent nature of original sin. She also became conscious of her own natural impotence in confronting sin and the necessity of absolute subjection to God. Around 1556, various friends suggested that her newfound knowledge was diabolical, not divine. She began to inflict various tortures and mortifications of the flesh upon herself. But her confessor, the Jesuit Saint Francis Borgia, reassured her of the divine inspiration of her thoughts. On Saint Peter's Day in 1559, Teresa became firmly convinced that Jesus Christ presented himself to her in bodily form, though invisible. These visions lasted almost uninterrupted for more than two years. 
In another vision, a seraph drove the fiery point of a golden lance repeatedly through her heart, causing an ineffable spiritual and bodily pain. I saw in his hand a long spear of gold, and at the point there seemed to be a little fire. He appeared to me to be thrusting it at times into my heart, and to pierce my very entrails. When he drew it out, he seemed to draw them out also, and to leave me all on fire with a great love of God. The pain was so great, that it made me moan, and yet so surpassing was the sweetness of this excessive pain, that I could not wish to be rid of it. This vision was the inspiration for one of Bernini's most famous works, The Ecstasy of Saint Teresa at Santa Maria della Vittoria in Rome. The memory of this episode served as an inspiration throughout the rest of her life, and motivated her lifelong imitation of the life and suffering of Jesus, epitomized in the motto usually associated with her. Lord, either let me suffer or let me die. Topic. Activities as reformer Teresa entered a Carmelite monastery of the Incarnation in Avila on 2 November 1535. She found herself increasingly in disharmony with the spiritual malaise prevailing at the monastery. Among the 150 nuns living there, the observance of cloister, designed to protect and strengthen the spirit and practice of prayer, became so lax that it actually lost its very purpose. The daily invasion of visitors, many of high social and political rank, spoiled the atmosphere with frivolous concerns and vain conversations. These violations of the solitude absolutely essential to progress in genuine contemplative prayer grieved Teresa to the extent that she longed to do something. The incentive to give outward practical expression to her inward motive was inspired in Teresa by the Franciscan priest Saint Peter of Alcantara, who became acquainted with her early in 1560 and became her spiritual guide and counselor. She resolved to found a reformed Carmelite convent, correcting the laxity which she had found in the cloister of the Incarnation and others. Gamara de Uloa, a woman of wealth and a friend, supplied the funds. Teresa worked for many years encouraging Spanish Jewish converts to follow Christianity. The absolute poverty of the new monastery, established in 1562 and named St. Joseph's San Jose, at first excited a scandal among the citizens and authorities of Avila, and the little house with its chapel was in peril of suppression, but powerful patrons, including the bishop himself, as well as the impression of well-secured subsistence and prosperity, turned animosity into approval. In March 1563, when Teresa moved to the new cloister, she received the papal sanction to her prime principle of absolute poverty and renunciation of property, which she proceeded to formulate into a constitution. Her plan was the revival of the earlier, stricter rules, supplemented by new regulations such as the three disciplines of ceremonial flagellation prescribed for the divine service every week, and the discalciation of the nun. For the first five years, Teresa remained in pious seclusion, engaged in writing. In 1567, she received a patent from the Carmelite general, Rubio de Ravenna, to establish new houses of her order, and in this effort and later visitations she made long journeys through nearly all the provinces of Spain. Of these she gives a description in her Libro de las Fundaciones. Between 1567 and 1571, reform convents were established at Medina del Campo, Malangon, Valladolid, Toledo, Pastrana, Salamanca, and Alba de Tormes. As part of her original patent, Teresa was given permission to set up two houses for men who wished to adopt the reforms. She convinced John of the Cross and Anthony of Jesus to help with this. They founded the first convent of Discalced Carmelite Brethren in November 1568 at Duruelo. Another friend, Geronimo Gratian, Carmelite visitator of the older observance of Andalusia and apostolic commissioner, and later provincial of the Teresian reforms, gave her powerful support in founding convents at Segovia 1571, Bees de Segura 1574, Seville 1575, and Caravaca de la Cruz Murcia, 1576, while the deeply mystical John, by his power as teacher and preacher, promoted the inner life of the movement. In 1576, a series of persecutions began on the part of the older observant Carmelite order against Teresa, her friends, and her reforms. Pursuant to a body of resolutions adopted at the general chapter at Piacenza, the definitors of the order forbade all further founding of convents. The general chapter condemned her to voluntary retirement to one of her institutions. She obeyed and chose St. Joseph's at Toledo. Her friends and subordinates were subjected to greater trials. Finally, after several years, her pleadings by letter with King Philip II of Spain secured relief. 
As a result, in 1579, the processes before the Inquisition against her, Gratian, and others were dropped, which allowed the reform to continue. A brief of Pope Gregory XIII allowed a special provincial for the younger branch of the Discalced nuns, and a royal rescript created a protective board of four assessors for the reform. During the last three years of her life, Teresa founded convents at Villanueva de la Jara in northern Andalusia, 1580, Palencia, 1580, Soria, 1581, Burgos, and Granada. 1582. In total, 17 convents, all but one founded by her, and as many men's cloisters were due to her reform activity of 20 years. <laughs> Death and canonization Her final illness overtook her on one of her journeys from Burgos to Alba de Tormes. She died in 1582, just as Catholic nations were making the switch from the Julian to the Gregorian calendar, which required the removal of 5 to 14 October from the calendar. She died either before midnight of the 4th of October or early in the morning of the 15th of October, which is celebrated as her feast day. According to liturgy as then in use, she died on the 15th in any case, counted from the sunset of the preceding day, the 4th of October, as it were, is occupied precisely on that rationale by the feast of Saint Francis, who died on the evening of the 3rd. Her last words were, "My Lord, it is time to move on. Well then, may your will be done. O oh my Lord and my spouse, the hour that I have longed for has come." It is time to meet one another. In 1622, 40 years after her death, she was canonized by Pope Gregory XV. The Cortes exalted her to patroness of Spain in 1617, and the University of Salamanca previously conferred the title Doctor Ecclesia with a diploma. The title is Latin for Doctor of the Church but is distinct from the papal honor of Doctor of the Church, which is always conferred posthumously and was finally bestowed upon her by Pope Paul VI on 27 September 1970, along with Saint Catherine of Siena, making them the first women to be awarded the distinction. Teresa is revered as the Doctor of Prayer. The mysticism in her works exerted a formative influence upon many theologians of the following centuries, such as Francis of Sales, Fainelin, and the Port Royalists. Topic. Mysticism The kernel of Teresa's mystical thought throughout all her writings is the ascent of the soul in four stages the autobiography ch's, 10 The first, devotion of heart, is mental prayer of devout concentration or contemplation. It is the withdrawal of the soul from without and especially the devout observance of the Passion of Christ and Penitence autobiography 11.20. The second, devotion of peace, is where human will is surrendered to God. This is by virtue of a charismatic, supernatural state given by God, while the other faculties, such as memory, reason, and imagination, are not yet secure from worldly distraction. While a partial distraction is due to outer performances such as repetition of prayers and writing down spiritual things, yet the prevailing state is one of quietude autobiography 14 .1. The third, devotion of union, is absorption in God. It is not only a supernatural but an essentially ecstatic state. Here there is also an absorption of the reason in God, and only the memory and imagination are left to ramble. This state is characterized by a blissful peace, a sweet slumber of at least the higher soul faculties, or a conscious rapture in the love of God. The fourth, devotion of ecstasy, is where the consciousness of being in the body disappears. Sense activity ceases, memory and imagination are also absorbed in God or intoxicated. Body and spirit are in the throes of a sweet, happy pain, alternating between a fearful fiery glow, a complete impotence and unconsciousness, and a spell of strangulation, sometimes by such an ecstatic flight that the body is literally lifted into space. This after half an hour is followed by a reactionary relaxation of a few hours in a swoon-like weakness, attended by a negation of all the faculties in the union with God. The subject awakens from this in tears, it is the climax of mystical experience, producing a trance. Indeed, she was said to have been observed levitating during Mass on more than one occasion. Teresa is one of the foremost writers on mental prayer, and her position among writers on mystical theology is unique. In all her writings on this subject, she deals with her personal experiences. Her deep insight and analytical gifts helped her to explain them clearly. Her definition was used in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. 
Contemplative prayer oracion mental in my opinion is nothing else than a close sharing between friends it means taking time frequently to be alone with him who we know loves us She used a metaphor of mystic prayer as watering a garden throughout her writings Topic <laughs> writings Teresa's writings, produced for didactic purposes, stand among the most remarkable in the mystical literature of the Catholic Church. The autobiography, written before 1567, under the direction of her confessor, Fr. Pedro Ibáñez. El Camino de Perfección, The Way of Perfection, written also before 1567, at the direction of her confessor. Meditations on Song of Songs. 1567, written nominally for her daughters at the convent of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. El Castillo Interior, the Interior Castle, written in 1577, may have influenced René Descartes, especially his Meditations on First Philosophy. Relaciones, relationships, an extension of the autobiography, giving her inner and outer experiences in epistolary form. Two smaller works are the Conceptos del Amor, Concepts of Love and exclamaciones. In addition, there are Las Cartas Saragossa, 1671, or her correspondence, of which there are 342 extant letters and 87 fragments of others. Saint Teresa's prose is marked by an unaffected grace, an ornate neatness, and charming power of expression, together placing her in the front rank of Spanish prose writers, and her rare poems, Todas las poses, Munster, 1854, are distinguished for tenderness of feeling and rhythm of thought. Topic. Philosophical works Christia Mercer, a Columbia University philosophy professor, claims that the 17th-century Frenchman, René Descartes, lifted some of his most influential ideas from Teresa of Avila, who, 50 years before Descartes, wrote popular books about the role of philosophical reflection in intellectual growth. Mercer lays out her case in the journal Philosophical Studies, describing a number of striking similarities between Descartes' seminal work Meditations on First Philosophy and Teresa's Interior Castle. Topic. Excerpts Saint Teresa, who reported visions of Jesus and Mary, was a strong believer in the power of holy water, claiming to have used it with success to repel evil and temptations. She wrote, I know by frequent experience that there is nothing which puts the devils to flight like holy water. A poem The modern poem Christ Has No Body, though widely attributed to Teresa, is not found in her writings. Saint Teresa and the Infant Jesus of Prague Though there are no written historical accounts proving that Teresa of Avila ever owned the infant Jesus of Prague statue, according to a pious legend, Teresa once owned the statue and gave it to a noblewoman traveling to Prague. The age of the statue dates to approximately the same era as Teresa. It was thought that Teresa carried a portable statue of the child Jesus wherever she went. Contemporary history cannot confirm that the Prague image was what she was thought to have owned. Catholic pious beliefs follow the local legend, certainly already circulated by the early 1700s. Teresa is also portrayed in the biographical 1984 film Teresa de Jesus as protecting this infant statue in her many calamitous travels. In some scenes, the other religious sisters take turn in changing its vestments. The devotion to the child Jesus spread quickly in Spain, possibly due to her mystical visions. The Spanish nuns who established Carmel in France brought this devotion with them, and it became widespread in France. Indeed, one of Teresa's most famous disciples, Saint Thérèse of Lisieux, a French Carmelite, herself named for Teresa, took as her religious name Sister Thérèse of the Child Jesus and the Holy Face. Topic. Patron saint In the 1620s, Spain debated who should be the country's patron saint. The choices were either the current patron, Saint James Matamoros, or a pairing of him and the newly canonized Saint Teresa of Avila. Teresa's promoters said Spain faced newer challenges, especially the threat of Protestantism and societal decline at home, thus needing a more contemporary patron who understood those issues and could guide the Spanish nation. 
Santiago's supporters Santiaguistas fought back and eventually won the argument, but Teresa of Avila remained far more popular at the local level. Saint James the Greater kept the title of patron saint for the Spanish people, and the Most Blessed Virgin Mary under the title Immaculate Conception as the sole patroness for the entire Spanish kingdom. Topic. Portrayals A biography of Saint Teresa was written by Marcel Auclair available in English, written originally in French Saint Teresa was painted in 1819–20 by François Gérard, a French neoclassical painter. Saint Teresa was the inspiration for one of Bernini's most famous sculptures, The Ecstasy of Saint Teresa in Santa Maria della Vittoria, Rome. Simone de Beauvoir singles out Teresa as a woman who lived the human condition perhaps the only woman to do so in her book The Second Sex. Saint Teresa is the subject of the song, "'Teresa's Sound World' by Sonic Youth off the 1992 album Dirty, lyrics by Thurston Moore. Saint Teresa features prominently in Joan Osborne's song with the same name. She is a principal character of the opera Four Saints in Three Acts by the composer Virgil Thompson with a libretto by Gertrude Stein. She is mentioned prominently in Catherine Harrison's novel Poison. The main character, Francisca de Luarca, is fascinated by her life. R. A. Lafferty was strongly inspired by El Castillo Interior when he wrote his novel Fourth Mansions. Quotations from St. Teresa's work are frequently used as chapter headings. Pierre Klossowski prominently features Saint Teresa of Avila in his metaphysical novel The Baphomet. George Eliot compared Dorothea Brooke to Saint Teresa in Middlemarch 1871 and wrote briefly about the life and works of Saint Teresa in the «Prelude» to the novel. Thomas Hardy took Saint Teresa as the inspiration for much of the characterization of the heroine Tess Teresa Derbyfield, in Tess of the D'Urbervilles 1891, most notably the scene in which she lies in a field and senses her soul ecstatically above her. The contemporary poet Jory Graham features Saint Teresa in the poem Breakdancing in her volume The End of Beauty. Nigel Wingrove's 1989 short film Visions of Ecstasy was based on Teresa of Avila. Paz Vega stars as Teresa in Teresa, El Cuerpo de Cristo, a 2007 Spanish biopic directed by Ray Loriga. Barbara Mujica's novel Sister Teresa, while not strictly hagiographical, is based upon Teresa's life. Performance artist Linda Montano has cited Teresa of Avila as one of the most important influences on her work and since her return to Catholicism in the 2000s has done performances of her life. Concha Velasco portrays Teresa in Teresa de Jesus, a 1984 television miniseries directed by Josefina Molina. Timothy Findlay's 1999 novel Pilgrim features Saint Teresa as a minor character. See also Notes References Topic. Bibliography Teresa of Avila, Way of Perfection, London, 2012. Lamovia.net ISBN 978-1-78336-025-3 The Interior Castle, The Mansions, Tan Books, 1997. ISBN 978-0-89555-604-2 the Way of Perfection, Tan Books, 1997. ISBN 978-0-89555-602-8 Teresa of Avila, The Book of Her Life, translated, with notes, by Kieran Cavanaugh, OCD and Otilio Rodriguez, OCD. Introduction by Jody Bylinkoff. Indianapolis, Cambridge, Hackett Publishing Company, 2008. ISBN 978-0-87220-907-7 The Complete Poetry of Saint Teresa of Avila, a bilingual edition. Edition y Traducion de Eric W. Vogt. New Orleans, University Press of the South, 1996. Second edition, 2015. XL, 116p. ISBN 978-1-937030-52-0.
The Delighted Angel Drama about Teresa of Avila and Rabija al Adavia by Javad Karahassan, Vienna Salzburg Klagenfurt, Arbos 1995. The Interior Castle, edited by E. Allison Pierce, Doubleday, 1972. ISBN 978-0-385-03643-6 The Way of Perfection translated and edited by E. Allison Pierce, Doubleday, 1991. ISBN 978-0-385-06539-9 The Life of Teresa of Jesus, The Autobiography of Teresa of Avila translated by E. Allison Pierce, Doubleday, 1991. ISBN 978-0-385-01109-9 Teresa of Avila, An Extraordinary Life, Shirley du Boulay, Bluebridge, 1995 ISBN 978-0-9742405-2-7 Teresa, Outstanding Christian Thinkers, Rowan Williams, Continuum, 1991. ISBN 978-0-8264-5081-4 the Eagle and the Dove, St. Teresa of Avila and St. Thérèse of Lisieux by Vita Sackville West. First published in 1943 by Michael Joseph Limited, 26 Bloomsbury Street, London, WC1. Castles in the Sand Fiction with Cited Sources about Teresa of Avila by Carolyn A. Green, Lighthouse Trails Publishing, 2009. ISBN 978-0-9791315-4-7. Fifteen Days of Prayer with St. Teresa of Avila by Gina Bevan, New City Press, 2011. ISBN 978-1-56548-366-8 Barbara Mujica, Teresa de Avila, Lettered Woman, Nashville, Vanderbilt University Press, 2009 E. Rhodes, Teresa de Jesus's Book and the Reform of the Religious Man in Sixteenth-Century Spain in Lawrence Lux Sterrett and Carmen Mangian eds, Gender, Catholicism and Spirituality, Women and the Roman Catholic Church in Britain and Europe, 1200–1900 Basingstoke, Palgrave Macmillan, 2011. Works of St. Teresa of Avila online. Christian Classics Ethereal Library St. Teresa's Autobiography in an online version at Project Gutenberg, Lewis, David the 27th of September 1904. The Life of Saint Teresa of Jesus. London, Thomas Baker. Topic: External links. Saint Teresa, Virgin. Butler's Lives of the Saints. Founder statue in Saint Peter's Basilica. Biography online. Saint Teresa of Avila. Patron saints: Saint Teresa of Avila. Books written by St. Teresa of Avila, including St. John of the Cross Works by Teresa of Avila at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Teresa of Avila at Internet Archive Works by Teresa of Avila at LibriVox public domain audiobooks. Basilica of St. Teresa in Alba de Tormes in Spanish Alba de Tormes, Sepulcro de Santa Teresa, Tomb of St. Teresa on YouTube in Spanish Life of St. Teresa of Jesus, of the Order of Our Lady of Carmel Way of Perfection Interior Castle or the Mansions Convent of St. Teresa in Avila Poems of St. Teresa Santa Teresa, an Appreciation, 1900, by Alexander White, from Project Gutenberg Colonnade Statue St. Peter's Square